Hey guys, welcome to this new lesson. Let's talk more about how you should pour uh, your geode resin um, artwork and how you can create amazing lines with resin. So a lot of you are asking me those questions because my paintings are looking a little bit different than other artists are creating their, uh, their artwork. And here are my best, best tips and practices uh, to achieve similar results to the ones that I'm having, right? So there are three things that you need to focus on. First is the right materials that you need to use. Second is the right tools. And the third one is the right technique. So all of those three uh, components are very important. And I will talk about all of three of them. But uh, yeah, so first of all, the right materials right if you want to create uh, if you want to have control over your pore and if you want to have the lines going in the way that you want them to go in a specific design and you want to create this amazing uh, shading and ombre look uh, you need proper resin and uh, not every resin is good to use for geode art um, there are a couple of brands that are good uh, what you need to focus on is the very nice, you know, medium to high viscosity. The best is the high viscosity. So the resin is not so runny, right? Uh, I'm using a lot of the time for ma majority of my project. I'm using geode resin from Colorberry. And I'm trusting this resin to work with me properly and to stay where I'm pouring it. Uh, but that's, that's not the only thing that you need to remember about. But if you are on other continents that you cannot get the uh, color berry resin and it's not easily purchasable for you, uh, just get Mass Etop Epoxy Tabletop Pro resin as well or Arte resin uh, in Canada. But this is the first thing, the proper resin that you need to work with, right, for this specific project. Uh, second of all uh, is the tools that you are using. A lot of tutorials that I saw um, from other artists, they are blowing uh, resin around with the heat guns. And this is something that is actually bringing a lot of anxiety in me and frightening me. Uh, because if you blow all of your lines around, you just pour the resin and blow the runs around, you never know where the resin is gonna flow. So if you want the resin to be more controlled, never use heat gun in your artwork creation process. Um, only I'm only using a blow to blow torch, uh, the kitchen small uh, torch uh, at the end of pouring. It's not even in between, right? I'm doing it at the end uh, of the pot life of the resin pot life so usually after like 40 minutes because uh, geode resin uh, from colorberry is giving me 45 minutes of work time i'm usually blow torching the artwork not earlier than 40 minutes um of the work so this is the second thing if i will torch my resin after 15 20 minutes my fir first lines that I'm going to pour I'm, are going to work together, they're going to blend together and they are going to create whatever resin is going to, you know, flow. So remember about leveled surface. I don't know if you are a beginner or you are advanced, but leveled surface, it's a must in the resin artwork. And if you don't want to get frustrated with your creation, just remember to check the level before you even start working with resin, right? Because it's gonna make or break your artwork. And this is the second thing. And the third thing is the right technique of the pouring, right? So you need to give a space of breathing between the lines. If you don't want the lines to like run into each other too much, you need to give them some space because when you pour the resin, the resin is still having, it's more like 3D, it's much more, in volume, the line that you are pouring is in vol much more volume, uh, and then the resin is sitting on the canvas, it's going much more flat and it's spreading, right? So, you need to give it a space um, to spread, and this is very important. And I'm using for all of my pores, I'm using paper cups and I'm reusing and reusing and reusing them again because you cannot remove cured resin from, from, from the cup. 
but I'm just using the same cups and I'm squeezing them like that. And this is how I'm controlling how much resin is flowing out, right? So this is how I'm controlling my, like my line work and each of the lines that I'm pouring, they're very thin and they're very specific. And then I'm using mostly, if I'm working on small projects, like up to 16 inches, I'm using this uh, bamboo stick and I'm geode shaping uh, the lines. I'm making them a little bit more interesting. I'm making them in a shape of agate slice. Like you can see those little, little bumps and little um, diversification in the lines, right? So they're not like super flat. I don't like flat line work, which is like super round and nothing is really happening. If you use like, if you do geode shaping and if you use your stick to geode shape the lines into the um, so, you know, shape that you want to see on your project and you give the proper room for them to breathe and to stay there, uh, you will get the results that you want to get, right? Because if you, um, if you use the heat gun instead and if you blow around resin, you're just like, it's like flipping a coin. Just like you are giving it to resin guts and you are like, okay, it's like 50-50% of chance that I'm going to get something nice or I'm going to get something bad. Um, and it's the same with uh, Dirty Pour. Nev if you want to have um, control over resin, never do Dirty Pours. Um, you just need to, you know, um, put line after line after line and be very... Um, patient with the process and do it just slowly with a flow and take the take the time for the resin to sit don't torch it till the end of the pot pot life of the resin uh, which is different for different resins like for color berries 45 minutes um, but for many resins like tabletop pro uh, mass epoxy is just half an hour i guess and so be mindful about which materials you are working with right and don't take my words for granted because your resin can be a little bit different. But those are my best tips to create and achieve uh, controlled, advanced line work with resin. And I will show you a couple of, um, you'll see, you know, even on the Instagram or even here, you'll see a couple of my projects that I did. And... Uh, even though resin is a fluid art and sometimes it's creating um, effects and results that I cannot predict fully, but I feel like I still have control 80% of the time of the final look and final design and I can still create some nice shading. But yeah, um, stay, subscribe and hit the like button if you like uh, those tips that I shared with you and hopefully i can see you in another videos when i'm gonna share a lot of tips and um, very nice hacks for advanced geode resin and also abstract resin creations so i'm gonna see you in the next video